Welcome to our first webinar in 2019. I'm really glad to see each one of you today in our event. I'm Igor Brodowski, sales and support engineer of Woodwork for Inventor team. And today I will talk about furniture hardware in Woodwork for Inventor. Before delving into technical jungles, I want to emphasize that my goal today is to advise you on hardware-related workflows of Woodwork for Inventor. This is not the trainings, therefore, if you need more information, please ask your local Woodwork for Inventory sellers for advice. Thousands of hardware manufacturers and tens of thousands of suppliers are presented on the market today, as each furniture manufacturer works with unique hardware set, including custom-made hardware, and must offer some flexible solution suitable for each of them. So let's find out how Woodwork for Inventor deals with that challenges. First of all, each hardware item includes a parametrical model designed in Autodesk Inventor, accompanied with a Woodwork for Inventor definition. Parameters that change geometry of a component can be easily managed through Microsoft Excel. You can make hundreds of configurations within minutes. However, it's not enough to just have a geometry. Woodwork for Inventor allows to add positioning instructions as well as joiner information. This guarantees that hull will be perfectly aligned drastically reducing human factor effort. Finally, you can significantly reduce the amount of components in your library, since one unified component can replace many components of the same type. So what does unified component mean? On the left, we have different handles that have similar drilling scheme. So on design stage, all they can be replaced with a single handle from a Woodwork for Inventor library. However, you must know which one of those will be used during final assembly. To do this, you need to indicate the code and the name. And once it's done, it's basically enough for production. Here is the model that I will use during my demo and we will start from a design. So I will start a design from a square based box covered with the panels. As you can see we have some parameters in there and we will use dress up functionality to quickly apply the panels on those selected faces. We will define the parameter thickness, then I will use a skeleton visibility control to hide the skeleton body. And now we can use trim function, which can perfectly deal with the situation when the panels overlap. So now we can fix these overlapping panels very easily, as you may see. And once it's done, we can also utilize all functionality of Inventor to make some changes on this geometry. Okay. So in this case, what I will do, I will draw some sketch on the skeleton body. And this will be used to make a 3D sketch, which will create a wave shape of it. So basically here I defining the position of this uh, 3D sketch where it starts. We have just one single small uh, straight piece of geometry here. Of course, it's parametrically driven, so we can define the parameters. It will depend on the panel thickness. And once it's done, we can basically do the same on the other side of the model. And that's basically it. So now we are ready to make a 3D sketch. And this will be connected with those two small pieces. Okay, we can use this as a reference geometry. So it will go diagonally from one corner to the other one, like so. Okay, then we can add some vertexes to control the shape of this uh, spline, because now it's going in a simple straight line to connect those two points. And now we can insert a few vertexes, like here. Then we can just pull those controls in order to change the position. And once it's done, we can finally tune the position by using constraints. And that's basically it. So we have a nice wave shape on it. And we can project the shape on our panels, like that. Okay, so let's use a project geometry tool in order to have this line on our panel. And as you can see, we can perfectly utilize all the functionality of Inventor in order to change the shape. Okay, and so let's define the cutout on one side, basically do the same on the other. So after that, our initial shape of this model will be completed, and we can deal with some additional parameters in order to control how it works. Now we need to deal with the parameter which will define the distance between the panels it will be calculated like subtract the amount of uh, shells multiplied with panel thickness from total height and then divided by amount of shells plus one. Okay, no worries, this uh, session will be recorded. So if you don't catch the formula, no problem at all. You will see this 
on the recorded video so you can just make a pulse and see carefully what is what. But basically this is nothing more than a simple math. So what we have so far, we have formulas which will control the shelf quantity. And uh, that's why I'm using this uh, design stage, why I explain this. Because uh, here we can define the formulas which will affect our future work on a hardware level. When we will build a final assembly, then we can utilize those parameters in our design. So what I'm doing right now is just defining the place for my first shelf. On a skeleton level, it's enough to just have only one item, like that. That's the position for the shelf, so we can project the geometry. But now the shelf is too big, so we can decrease the size of it by using offset. And of course, it will be equal to the panel thickness, just a little bit more, to have a, uh, an option to change the, the position of the shelf, yeah, because it will be adjustable. Now just a few more tweaks about the shape, just some fillets here and there. And that's basically it. So we finish our design stage. So right now we can make an assembly. Let's use make component functionality of Inventor to define uh, what solids will be utilized in order to make the panels. And now once it's done, we will define the position of our assembly. We define the folder. So now we are moving to the assembly level. Where we can deal with this uh, situation, we need to know, uh, we know the distance between the shelves, sorry, and then we need to know the distance for the pattern, because we need to have multiple items. So what we're doing, we're just linking the parameters between those two files, and we also need to not forget about the thickness of the panel in our uh, distance. And so the distance to the next item will be equal distance between shells and plus the thickness of one of those. As simple as that. Okay. Again, no worries at all about the math. You can see a recorded video and just pause it and see more carefully what's happening. Okay. Now uh, it's enough information for make a pattern. So we're just defining what object will be taken in this pattern and we will utilize the shelf in it. And then we can utilize this newly created parameter for defining the spacing. Okay, and that's basically it. It's enough to just change the direction, flip it over, and that's it. You can assign some materials. In this case, I'll utilize very simple material selection, just body kind of material. And of course, later during the BM, I can just say what material will be used for this body components, exact code and exact name. So here we can do the cover material assignment, just assign some edge bannings in this case. And that's basically it. So you can see that almost all the edges now is covered. We can quickly check if we have still some uncovered edges and then apply the cover material on them if needed. Select a single face mode if you need. And that's basically it. So in a few minutes, we have completely covered model. And now let's speak about the hardware. Okay, so here we'll have four main stages. First of all, we need to insert and position the hardware items. Once it's done, we need to configure them, because maybe in some place the configuration should be different from the other. So that's why we need to take this into account. Then when the configuration has been completed, we need to make holes or wooden joints, make a joinery, and finally define right codes and right names. So now let's speak about each of those steps more in details. And we will begin from the positioning. In order to make a positioning operation, we need to define the additional working geometry, which in this case will be a work planes. So what I'm doing here, I'm just defining the parameter, the offset from the side, which will allow me to change the offset uh, distance it will, if it will be needed. So just uh, parametrically driven work planes will help me to uh, set the position of the component in the right way, like that. Okay. And that's basically it. So we have uh, the definition for those work planes for the top panel. We can undo isolate, go back, and then we need to uh, add some uh, parameters for vertical intent. Yeah? Because we just had a uh, horizontal ident, and then we can just define this for a vertical, for a top and bottom mounting of the side panels. Again, the same rule applied here. We can just quickly make a work planes. 
and it's a very, very elegant and easy way of defining the position because we can face with very complex uh, designs so those work planes works perfectly in these cases okay now we can temporarily hide the shells and use uh, join attach functionality which allows you to place hardware item into the design choose the configuration but in this case we will use default and in order to place it on the right spot we need to just indicate where the nestlet board will be located where the pillar board will be located and where the axes are and that's basically it of course this selection depends on the hardware you're using or some of the hardware items maybe you need to choose another configuration yeah choose another uh, reference objects but in this case it's enough to just pick three of those you can see on the screen it's very easy and basically when we choose uh, one set of geometry we can repeat this step again we can re just request to insert the lastly, lastly used component one more time again okay and then select uh, reference geometry for it okay and last but not least the work planes and once it's done we can just apply the changes and as you can see, now all those hardware items is on the place. Okay, perfect. As you can see, quite fast and easy way. Okay, now we need to just uh, add some more to fix the side panels. And as you can see, uh, it's like a very simple uh, procedure, just indicating where the joinery must be located, and it actually is placed on this correct position of course now I'm just designing this from scratch and some uh, of you uh, asking about can I define the some hardware set in advance uh, yes you can but uh, it's easier to just take existing model if this hardware set repeats yeah because you can just take existing model with all the hardware make a copy and utilize it in your future design so uh, as you can see now uh, we position those minifixes but we have I need to place some shelf holders and here we have a situation when we're working with the pattern yeah so we have multiple shelves that's why we need to include uh, this uh, shelf holder into the pattern so how how i can handle this situation it's enough to just place the hardware set for first item in the uh, in the pattern okay so i can just choose the top shelf i remember that this was uh, the first one i have made in, our, in my design and later I can multiply those hardware items by using a pattern functionality. Okay, so we have a set of hardware for this first item, like so. And our shelf is now fixed on the position. Now we need to edit pattern and then include those supports in our design. Okay, starting from the second because first was used for a reference, so we can just erase it later as you can see now we correct the amount of those supports in a very easy way so as you can see in just a matter of minutes i place all the hardware needed for this uh, nice furniture unit now let's take a look at the next step at the configuration in most cases after placement i need to just do something with the hardware in order to ensure right configuration and it's easy to do this because i can hide the panels all in once then change the visibility of some components which is not needed for me and as you can see this uh, dowel is in the wrong place so i must to change its position like so it's easy to do because it's excel driven configuration and then i can use this one as a template okay this one is a template and now we can change the configuration of the other items by just simply clicking on them and as you can see, it's a very easy way of changing the configuration of the hardware. Yeah, just be the same as a template. That's actually what this command does. Okay, and again, a minute later, we have a right configuration. Okay, so we can double check if everything is correct in the set. And then turn on the components with Woodward for Inventor material. As simple as that. Okay, now let's make a pattern visible. And we are ready to go for the next step, which will be a generation of joinery. So let's use a sculpt command. And it's called sculpt, sculpt for a reason. We will see later why it's sculpt in such way. But in this case, we just generate the hulls. 
it's not making any addition geometry it's only subtracts the geometry from the model and as you can see we have all the holes nicely positioned on the side panels okay so uh, we have those holes on the place and let's see what will happen in case uh, if we will uh, need to deal with the names yeah so because now we have some generalized component called minifix yeah some generalized component called uh, a support a shelf support uh, those are suitable perfectly for making a house because in most cases hardware manufacturers are forced to utilize some standardized drilling schemes but of course different hardware which will fit in those holes uh, is purchased from different suppliers and they have different numbers and different names so we need to deal with this naming situation okay let's take a look at this how it happens and we utilize a BUM functionality which allows us to change the names and the codes of on items so how it happens we use the replacement scheme we can just create a new one and one single furniture item can have multiple hardware configurations yeah, so we can have more expensive or less expensive hardware set and what this is uh, what is that this is like a snapshot of, of ERP system which basically in this case it's XLS document it's Excel document which indicates the code the name of the component and also shows the picture so you can quickly find the right component of your design by just using utilizing the filter so as you can see when you enter some names it uh, runs through this list and finds the right component for you okay so it means that the same component may have multiple hardware configuration may be more expensive or less expensive in a matter of minutes and then you can do calculations of the BAM you can check the prime cost and other stuff in order to be sure that it suits your needs okay and now let's speak about the changes so what will happen in case if we want to change something in our design let's go back to our skeleton file and then go for the parameters and say that we want to change the shelf quantity from three to four shelves let's go back to our assembly update the situation and then basically we need to do sculpt again because we have new set of hardware so we need to do the sculpting operation again okay so we do this manually because otherwise it will be annoying to wait for this operation to be completed so we had just left this decision for the user and as you may see we have a new set of holes yeah just in a matter of minutes we change the configuration and we get new drilling scheme okay so this was like four basic steps in order to work with the hardware now let's take a look at more interesting situation when we are working with a joinery. So I believe there is many uh, of you who are working with a uh, solid wood. So it will be nice for you to see. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the situation when we work with joinery as a hardware. So what we have here is very simple stool, just nothing really special here. Just a basic model of three unique parts. And we need to join them somehow. Yeah, so as you can see now we have two profiles and a top panel and that's basically it. what we're doing here we are inserting some predefined wooden joinery item as you can see this also includes some dowel so we have some negative and positive shape here which will, will be used to add and subtract geometry okay and now let's go back and see how it works yeah, so we can switch the wireframe mode for convenience use a touch choose this object as you can see we have the same idea we need to just basically indicate where our component should be recited by just picking some reference items and as you can see the item is on the place right now okay so in shaded mode it's hard to see it here that's why i switched to the wireframe and we need to have another one on the other side so let's use mirror functionality choose this object choose a mirror plane and just apply this, the changes yeah so we want to reuse this object we don't want to copy it yeah, it's in a reuse state as you may see here okay and then uh, basically we need to use a pattern a circular pattern around a vertical z axis okay so let's choose the component basically we need to choose all of them except the top panel choose a rotation axis and that's basically it okay very clever and simple trick okay 
it's done and we can utilize the sculpt command and that's why it called in that way because it can not only subtract the geometry but also add the geometry to necessary components so we can found them in our pattern and take a look at how the geometry was changed as you can see we have nice changes here okay let's close this one and go back to the second profile and see uh, how the support changed yeah so there's nice cutouts perfect and also we have a dowel as a hardware item so those also may have different configuration different sizes maybe with dowel or without dowel so it's up to you to choose what can be done but as you can see it's very easy a way of managing solid wood joinery now let's take a look at another example when I use joinery inside of one of the parts. So it's basically a table. So this support already contains some joinery. And if we do a sculpt operation, it automatically cuts the shape for mounting. Yeah? So as you can see, when I move a support, it automatically regenerates the position of a cutout. As you can see, this timber already modified shape very nice so you can include some cutout geometry inside of your parts of solid wood and they will automatically produce needed joinery and now as a dessert let's take a look at the custom made hardware okay so say that we need to just do something uh, kinematic here okay so we have our skeleton model and on this skeleton model because we need to uh, work on a custom level what we did, we just defined the geometry which will be used in order to make this custom made hardware. So in this case, as you can see, I can check the kinematic if it works as I want it to be. Yes. And if I'm not happy with the results, I can easily change something by just uh, dragging those uh, lines. Yeah. So I can change the uh, position. Yeah. Maybe make this spline uh, not so uh, stiff. Yeah. And then close this block and see if the kinematic works as I want it. Okay, let's say that it works. And now we can basically derive this geometry in a 3D and utilize it for making those custom-made hardware items. Also, I can make a negative geometry and a positive geometry. So this can be either the uh, wooden joints or maybe just a hardware, regular hardware. And as you can see here in the 3D, I can check the kinematic if it works as I want. Yeah, so here I can use all the functionality of Inventor together with Woodwork. So for instance, I can use uh, collision detection. I can check if it does not restrict any movement here and so on. Maybe I need to modify another part. So all this will be shown. So I think it's very nice uh, way of developing your custom hardware. Of course, for this demo, I choose just very simple uh, Example, but as you can imagine, this can be more and more advanced than it was shown here. And now uh, let's speak about the kinematic a little bit because we utilize all of powerful functionality of Inventor. We can easily uh, check if this joint actually is capable of uh, connecting with the other one. Yeah? So here you can see this nice example, very famous joint. So if you're interested about how I made it, just let us know and maybe I'll do short video about how to make such kind of joints but we are speaking about the kinematics so here as you can see we can check the collision if this object is actually fits in the right way if you can move it and so on if nothing restricts the movement so everything can be checked on a conceptual model you don't need to just make something from wood you can save a, a lot of time and uh, check it on a, uh, this digital prototype we can call it like that and now let's speak about the benefit that woodwork for inventor hardware brings to you so there is a lot of them but maybe i'll focus only on those that we think is more important so first of you first of all sorry uh, we can quickly develop new components yeah because they are excel driven so we can just do something just add a new line and uh, have a new configuration Okay, so uh, when you insert this component, you can easily choose uh, what configuration 
from many possible will be used yeah in this case uh, as i showed you we can choose a dowel if it's on the left or on the right maybe you don't want to have the dowel at all so we can just pick from the list what configuration we want to have and all this can be placed in one single item the third point those are highly customizable and driven by excel it means that basically you can utilize uh, ilogic functionality you can utilize excel functionality you can make some rules uh, you can have a dozens of different configuration developed very easily and then you can check if it actually works as you want and what is important that holes perfectly match on both connected items so there is no place for a human mistakes that's why uh, you can quickly and precisely position those items and get nice results okay so automated placement means that you don't have uh, room for mistake you don't have missing components and you can quickly update the uh, update the situation so for instance if the depth or height of your object changes just enter new parameters and the position of those hardware items will be changed according to the rules you have put in your model very nice Okay, uh, certainly in the time allotted for this webinar, it's not possible to answer all the questions you might have. So uh, I prepared some answers for most frequent of them. And let's take a look what we have here. So of course, number one is what hardware I get with the installation. So with the installation, you get uh, like a minimal set of the hardware you need for a, your daily work. Because as I said that we have a, a lot of different configurations on the market there's like hundreds of different producers and thousands of different suppliers so it's not possible to cover them all yeah we have different markets in europe and uh, in usa and so on so different producers a little bit different hardware and so on so basically you get like uh, let's say minimal uh, set of hardware which can be easily adjusted to meet your needs so now the next question is, okay, then can I download some models from the web? And the answer is a yes and no. Basically, you can download those models, but there's a few things. First of all, those will not have some uh, advanced logic. Yeah, so those will not have uh, positioning instructions. Those will not have uh, drilling instructions. And also, they will not have a configuration. Because as you can see in our case, because we have a single object with Excel-driven configurations, we can just quickly run through those variations yeah so we can just say the length will be different the diameter will be different and basically we update the component yeah that's it but uh, if you download the model from the manufacturer website then basically you get a single model for a single configuration so those are not grouped like many objects in one they are just split in multiple files and uh, in many cases, it's more easy to just uh, redo the model, remodel it, uh, and put the logic, put the Excel inside with the configurations, then trying to import the models from the manufacturer. Yeah. Visually, if you want to just see the model on, on uh, see the hardware on your model, it's not a big deal. But if you have, uh, if you want to have complete functionality with the logic, then it's easier to do this via modeling. And the next question is, okay, can I make my own hardware? And yes, absolutely, you can make it. And it's not so hard to do. You don't need to be a programmer. Yeah, so you need to just have some knowledge about how the system works. But the next question sounds like, can I use a logic? And for those of you who are not familiar with this word, I can just briefly explain this like uh, some kind of programming. Yeah, so you can embed a logic inside of your components. For instance, uh, you can say like uh, the rule uh, for instance, if the height of your model is more than some value, then maybe you need to have additional hinge on the door. Yeah, so if you want to have this logic in your models, then it's up to you. You can program it, but it's not mandatory, so it's optional. If you want, you can use it, no problem at all. The next question is, can I check the kinematic of the model? Can I check how this hardware moves, if it's no collisions and so on? Yes, of course, you can do this, no problem. And then let's speak about the iBoxes, if they have a fixture, if there's an option to place the fixtures inside of the iBoxes. So first of all, what the iBox means, the iBox is a predefined set of hardware, like uh, for instance, the drawer or a cabinet, uh, which fit in your design according to your defined position. Yeah, so I can just draw a box 
And then I can say, okay, here I have a cabinet. And this cabinet shrinks or expands according to the size of this box. And this eye box, of course, may have all the fixture inside. Yeah, so it's enough to just place the eye box with all the hardware inside, predefined, and just make a drilling operation. And that's basically it. Okay, the next question is maybe I can design hardware set in advance. Maybe I want to just have like four dowels four dowels in one row, or maybe I want to just have some group of hardware. Can I do this? Of course you can. So if you want, you can define this hardware set in advance, no problem at all. But an easier way would be to define this hardware together with the model itself. Yeah, so we can just define iBox with the hardware and use it in our future designs. So that's basically all the main questions we are often getting from the customer. Each of our customer have unique products and workflows. So if you want to know how Woodwork for Inventor can help you to improve your workflows, send your request to info at woodworkforinventor.com and then we can contact you in order to provide personally tailored answers. This is all the information I would like to share with you today. Thanks a lot for participating in our webinar. We will be waiting for you at the next events. Please follow us in our social media channels and of course, have a nice day. Goodbye.